when all of your friends who went to industry are buying houses and you are eating ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. That is what is hard. All right, so now that you've had enough time here at Carnegie Mellon as a PhD student, I'm sure mm -hmm. there's some things that maybe didn't go as planned or like some things that didn't meet yeah. your expectations. So what are some like, I guess you could call them like expectations versus reality kind of moments that you had okay. as a PhD student here in computer science? PhD research can often seem like very glamorous. Like it seems like all the time, you know, people are inventing cool things and it's very glamorous and they all go off and create startups and they get fabulously wealthy. The, the, the reality is that a PhD just requires a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of like boring mundane work. If you have one or two like really great ideas, that's like a good PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, and not everyone has even like one or two great ideas. And I'm not sure I've had one or two great ideas. <laughs> a good idea is just like one piece of a system. Mm -hmm. Like if you're doing a networking research project, you might spend 95% of your time setting up your simulator or building your network test bed. Yes. And you might spend 5% of the time inventing some new algorithm. Right. Or might, you might have an idea for an algorithm uh -huh. and it takes you, you know, an afternoon to come up with the idea, but then you might spend the next six months prototyping it yeah. and evaluating it. Right. And so you think, okay, like I had an idea in five minutes, I'm done, let's write a paper and graduate. It's like, <laughs> no, like you had an idea in five minutes, spend the next year building it, evaluating it, testing it. And so the, the thoroughness required to take that like five minute idea into a research paper, Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of implementation, a lot of evaluation, a lot of writing and positioning mm -hmm. of your idea to make sure that it fits well with the large corpus of other great ideas that people are coming up with. Right. Having worked with you throughout the semester, <laughs> I can attest that's true. Yes. Yeah. So you certainly spent a lot of time in the boring, mundane tasks of why is this packet not getting delivered? I think, I think it's exciting because it's new to me, <laughs> but I, get, I see what you mean. What would you say? is one regret you have about coming here. The PhD program as a whole is challenging and not necessarily for the reasons that you think. I, I don't think that I would ever really classify the work that I've done as a PhD student as ever being fundamentally that difficult. You just do the work. You spend a lot of time staring at your computer screen and eventually stuff gets produced. That's not the hard part. Mm -hmm. The hard part is everything else. Deciding what to work on. Mm -hmm. Deciding who to work on it with. And therefore, how are you going to divide credit for a project? How do you prioritize your time? How do you live on thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year when your friends are making $500,000 a year? Those are the things that are hard. Yeah. When all of your friends are, you know, who went to industry are buying houses, and you are eating ramen noodles, mm -hmm. that is what is hard right. about the PhD. It's not the work. The work just takes time. It takes yeah. a, a certain fixed amount of time. Every minute that you're not working on your work is just extending the time that you have to be in the PhD program. And I, I have had this problem myself a lot, is that like there is a critical path to finishing the PhD program. It takes X time, and you have to devote basically X time to it. Uh, and any minute you're not resolving work on that critical path, you're just extending your time here. You also told me that you had, I think, two different advisors here and that kind of uh, set your PhD a little bit off course. Yeah. So tell me about why that happened and I guess did you see it coming at all? The, the problem is that when you are working on a thesis, you want something cohesive. So I started working on one thesis direction when I began something in machine learning systems. Then after three years, I reset and I started on something new. Mm -hmm. So from a thesis point of view, I basically reset my PhD progress at the beginning of my fourth year. If the average computer science PhD is typically six years or five and a half years or six and a half years, I'm now at the tail end of that and I still have a little bit of work to do. I've been a PhD student for six and a half years now, uh, actually now coming up on seven years, and I probably have another year to year and a half left. I definitely didn't expect the penalty to be as high as it was. Mm -hmm. I thought that maybe there was a chance I'd just be able to build in some way on my work I'd already done. It turns out I had a lot to learn. I had a lot of catching up to do in terms of the background of this particular field, and it, it ended up being a big penalty. As an incoming PhD student, it's highly unlikely that you know enough about research and computer science to on your own decide that 
you want to work on some particular direction. That being said, there's a bunch of, you know, there's so much variety of things that you can work on in computer science, theory, networking, AI, core systems. And so you should not be afraid that you will not find something interesting. There is something interesting. Just don't be too tied to your own preconceived notions of what interesting and relevant means. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you should think about when applying to the PhD program and deciding to do a PhD. The PhD is a very like personal journey. It requires a lot of time, time away from your family and friends, in a, in a time in a, in a city far away. It requires financial loss for, for up to you know, many years. Just because your friends are doing it, just because your parents did it, parents told you to do it, just because you thought you wanted to, to do a PhD, doesn't mean that you need to do a PhD. The upsides are huge. It's a lot of fun. Research is great. Learning everything uh, about a subject area in this, this particular apprentice environment is very rewarding and does open doors. And I think that more people should consider PhDs, but I don't think that it is right for everybody. Just because your GPA is not a 4.0 doesn't mean you're not going to be a great PhD student. Just because all your friends are going into industry doesn't mean you will not be a great PhD student. But give it serious thought in both directions.